Running any business is hard work, and your recording studio business is no exception. As producers and engineers, it's easy to think that running a studio is gonna be nothing but fun, because making music is fun. And while the time spent making music is fun, there's so much more that goes into running a studio. I like to mentally split this into two parts, the job and the business. Making music is the job. It's showing up and working with your clients and being the producer, the recording engineer, mixing engineer, mastering engineer. The business is everything else, keeping track of projects, building clients, scheduling, keeping track of clients, Client rates, managing your website, Google SEO, marketing, and finding new clients. Not always the most fun part of running a business, but so important. So today I want to share a tool with you that I use to make my life easier and help me keep track of everything in one place. And that tool is Notion. This is not a sponsored video. Notion is a tool that I started using based on a recommendation from my friend Thomas Frank. Thomas runs a YouTube channel called Thomas Frank Explains, which is entirely dedicated to Notion deep dives and tutorials. Thomas is the Notion expert. Today I'm going to show you how I use it for my recording studio, but if after this video you want to learn more about Notion, Thomas's channel is the place for that. So here's my Studio Notion homepage. It's a simple layout split into two columns, one for notebooks and one for quick notes and to-do lists. The notebooks are different Notion pages that I use to organize information. I have one for clients, gear I'm selling, expenses, gear maintenance, and a software log where I store all of the logins and serial numbers for studio software and plugins. My client notebook is where I keep track of client rates, availability, projects, and goals, and I keep them organized in a database for easy sorting and finding. I keep track of their rates, which differ based on when we started working together. I don't like to suddenly raise rates for existing clients, and so through the years when I would raise the rates for the studio, I would quote the new rates when I took meetings with new clients, and so not everyone has the same rate all the time. I also keep track of their general availability here so that if someone needs to reschedule a session, I can look at other clients who might be available and looking for studio time and say, hey, I had a spot open up on Tuesday night if you're interested, and you usually I end up filling that spot, which means not losing a day of work. Each client's name is actually a page. Here's where I keep track of their goals. So in this case, the client had three new songs that he was working on that he wanted to record in the future. And since he's a solo artist, he wanted to assemble a band to be able to perform the new album. Coordinating a band doesn't fall into normal studio responsibilities, but I do have a big network of local musicians, so I always try to make connections where I can and get people playing music together. Checklists is where I'll keep track of albums, again using a database for each, with each entry being a song. I can then open up the song page and make notes on a song for song basis, or have a place to store lyrics or production ideas. In this case, the artist was working on two albums at the same time. One, a pop album called Valhalla, the other, a metal album which hadn't been named yet. So we've got a working title. When I made these checklists, Lists, both albums were in the recording phase, so I made columns for recording and mixing, but you can make them as detailed as you want. For example, if you're working on an album with a band that had similar parts to record for each song, you can make a checklist for the recording process for each instrument, like drums, bass, guitars, keys, vocals, background vocals, and so on. Notes is pretty self-explanatory, but here I'd made some notes about the mastering chain for the metal album. I've mastered one of the songs and I wanted an easy way to reference settings as well as my thought process as a starting point for the rest of the album. I have this layout saved as a template, so anytime I make a new page for a new artist, I just come up here to the top right corner, click the arrow next to New, and choose Client Template. To make and save templates of your own, you just go up to that same drop-down menu, click New Template, and start filling out the page with the information you'd like to have populated each time you make a new client page. Let's jump back a page and look through some other notebooks. I keep track of gear I'm looking to sell in a database. Nothing revolutionary here, but it's nice to see an overview of what I'm looking to sell and a semi-imaginary number of what I might make if I ever get around to listing and selling all of this gear. I have another database for expenses, which is something you should definitely be keeping track of, and I mark each one with a category tag and the frequency of those bills. My gear maintenance page is a little over the top, but if you're still watching, you're probably okay with that. I keep track of all of the gear, like guitars, microphones, speakers, and I note their current condition. This is not just for things that need repair, so I also note if things are working just fine. I'll make notes for things like the action being a little high on a guitar and maybe needs a full setup, or a mic stand that slowly slips over time and probably needs new rubber pads, a speaker making some weird crackling noise in the high end, and I recently started including the date that those notes were made. This is important because I also recently started sharing my studio space with other producers, and since I logged the status of all of the gear, if something suddenly stopped working, I have a timestamp note of the last time I checked it and whether or not it was working at that time. I keep track of cables separately, and I have each cable labeled with a piece of tape and given a number. I highly recommend numbering all of your cables at both ends so that you could easily look at the cable at the source and wherever you're plugging them in and quickly match them up. If you're recording drums, you might have a lot of mics, so you can easily look at the snare mic and see cable three. Then look at the preamp, find cable three, and you know which mic you're dealing with. But another great reason to number your cables is maintenance and repairs. Now I can easily make a note that XLR1 needs to be repaired, and I can log 
when I fix it and put it back into rotation. The last page here is a software log. I use a database to keep track of everything that requires a password, and every serial number for every third-party plugin and license. I only recently started keeping all of this info in one place, and it is such a game changer to be able to quickly find the info when I need to log in to update software, or even just remembering if a certain plugin uses an iLock or their own cloud licensing system. Notion is an incredibly powerful tool, and I'm certain that I'm not even close to utilizing its full potential. But hopefully some of these ideas can inspire you to better organize your studio business and make your life a little easier. So subscribe to the channel for more music business and music production tips and tricks, and I'll see you in the next video.